Hey everyone, it's Denise with Denise McDonald Fitness coming to you again with my next segment of a series that I'm doing this week called Changes That I Made to Be Fit and Fab at 50. <laughs> um, I know someone's asked me a couple times to just like ask me a lot of questions about what I, the changes that I made a couple of years ago to just be on a healthier path. And so I just thought I would share kind of like the top six things that I did. Uh, this week I covered, oh, we talked about diet soda, talked about Himalayan salt, which I love, and water. Hey, cat. Uh, water is a huge, I'm very passionate about water. And if you missed my blog and my video yesterday, you can go back and look at that. But today I wanted to talk about something that really helped me a lot, and it was reading ingredient labels. I, it was very eye-opening to me when I started doing that. Um, and I, you know, I guess back probably when I started, uh, you know, starting to lose weight and stuff, it was, I was going to Weight Watchers and back then it was all about low fat, low calorie, you know, 100 calorie snacks, you know, all those kind of term, terms that you'd see on, you know, food advertising and stuff. And because they were geared towards points and the point system was around calories and fiber. And so I think I was eating those kind of foods. And then when I really started learning about label reading, I was like, wow, like this is why maybe I'm not losing weight because I'm not eating the right foods. So um, I actually, oh, you know, I, I, I want to show you guys this book. So that book was a big change for me. It's the Eat Clean Diet. And Tosca Reno is the author. If you haven't picked up any of her books, I re recommend those. That book, it was easy read and it really taught me a lot about um, a lot of different things, but especially about the label reading. But um, so someone had said to me, and, I, and it just stuck with me from, di from the day that I started really looking more into it was, let your food come from one ingredient. And I'm like, one ingredient? And, the, and like someone said, like, so how many ingredients are in an egg? <laughs> and I thought, is this a trick question? But, you know, it's like one. It's one ingredient. So, like, when you think about it, like your fruits and your vegetables and your nuts and seeds, like all of that is one ingredient. It's not processed food. Uh, but obviously sometimes we feel like we have to buy some foods that are in a box or a can or a bag, but become very mindful when you read it. So look at the ingredients and I, I put some information in a blog that I'll post in a little while, but on how to read a label, cause sometimes you just think, oh, it should be obvious, but it, I look at labels all the time now and I'm like, oh, those little tricky marketers. No wonder people don't realize that this is stuff that they shouldn't eat. Like take, for example, a can of soup. Like I used to have soup all the time, like Campbell's soup, love Campbell's soup, right? So look at the sodium in that can and then look at how many servings, like you would think that's one serving in that can. I bet it's like two and a half. And so when you look at the sodium, you go, oh, 600 or 700 milligrams. If you ate the whole can, like, that's like the most sodium you should have in a whole day. So things like that, it's very tricky. You need to really analyze that label. And I'll just say, you know, like be careful of the calories. The one thing I look at, a couple of things I look at, I totally look at the salt content. I try to keep it as low as I possibly can. And the sugar, obviously, you want the fiber to be in there. You want um, protein, uh, you want the carbs not to be too high. But what I want you to do too is not only look at those numbers, but look at the ingredients. So you, you, the first few ingredients are, take up the majority of what's in that product. So like, I'll give you another example, something I thought I was doing really well at. I was eating this like 100% 100 whole wheat bread. I don't, I don't want to say the name of the bread, but, um, but I thought, oh, this seems really healthy. And someone called me and they said, that bread we're eating, you gotta turn it over and look at the ingredients. And like the third ingredient was like high fructose corn syrup. I was like, oh my God, because I had been trying to cut that out of my diet. I'm like, I don't, I don't do high fructose corn syrup. And here I was eating a bread that actually had it in there and I was like shocked. 
I mean, if someone walked through the bread aisle that day, they would have been like howling, look at me, because I was turning over every loaf of bread in the aisle I could find, and I was floored at how many breads had that ingredient in it. So it made me realize like, okay, I finally found one. I think Arnold doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. And Ezekiel bread is one that I eat all the time. Um, but like so many people, like, want to eat you know like they don't know like okay i'll buy arnold instead of buying this other one and then you're going to limit that ingredient out so i'm not talking about you know giving up and depriving yourself of something like that but just finding the right alternative that has healthier ingredients in it like that's what i try to get people to look at when they when they look at a label uh for example another thing like i was eating i think it was um Thomas's English muffins because it was like two points the Weight Watchers, right? And then I'd look at like Ezekiel English muffins and you compare the two of them. Like the next time you go to the supermarket, I, this is what I want you to do is just grab two different products and compare them. When you like, when you look at the label and look at the ingredients, the one that was a hundred calories had so many more ingredients in it because it had preservatives in it and it just had all these ingredients that you can't even pronounce you know that's another tip don't buy food with ingredients you can't pronounce in it I mean that's a great tip uh, so it's better to go for the food that might be a little bit more calorie but it doesn't have all those ingredients in it because we talked about that before if you've heard some of my other um, my other videos like your liver doesn't recognize food that's processed as much because it's it only recognizes like whole foods. It recognizes things that are a protein, a, a fat, and a, a carb. It doesn't, and vitamins and minerals, it doesn't, it doesn't know what aspartame is, or it doesn't know what, you know, red dye number five is. So you gotta be careful about that stuff. Um, but you guys have probably even seen it when you do it yourself. But one thing I do now is when I shop, I almost, never go down the aisles. There really is not a lot of food that I would buy down the aisles. If I buy peanut butter, it just says nuts, peanuts, or it might say peanuts and salt. Like I don't have, like if you turn over Jif or something, high fructose corn syrup in that. If you look at Nutella, okay, any of you Nutella fans out there, like I have such a pet peeve about Nutella because when you look at the ingredients of that, and again, when you go to the store, I, I challenge you to do this. Go look at that. First ingredient, sugar. It says it right on the jar. And like, I think it's two tablespoons is like 25 grams of sugar. And I'm like, how many people put more than two tablespoons like on their kid's bread because they think it's a healthy alternative? Yeah, it's hazelnut, but big deal. They sock tons of sugar in that thing. So that's the thing you know it's very tricky out there so i'm just always encourage people to just really flip that label over really take a look at what's in it um you know i think i i probably i'll there's a picture i have on my blog that you'll see tonight um and it's me with two different tomato sauces i sounded so bustoni when i said that tomato tomato sauce um and I was just shocked when you start turning over the jars of tomato sauce. The sodium and sugar in some of them should be illegal. I mean, it's crazy. And people just sometimes, I'm sure, they just go grab one. They're not really paying attention. But, you know, I've found some that have really low sodium and really low sugar, like a marinara sauce, and it's delicious. And you don't even need a lot of it. You know, so things like that. I just want people to be more aware because I think it just makes a big difference. So... Those are just some tips I have. Um, if you know, I would recommend getting that book. I think that book really helped me a lot. Um, you know, if there's something that you guys feel like, hey, could you cover this topic, or you know, maybe you have come across something and you didn't realize if it was, you know, a healthy food or not. You know, I would just say try to shop like from the perimeter of the store. I think I started talking about that. You know, like think about it when you go into a grocery store all the vegetables, all the fruit perimeter, the eggs, you know, the frozen food, all that stuff's on the perimeter. The aisles are what is all the processed stuff. You know, you don't want to buy a lot of food that has shelf life. Shelf life means it's sitting on a shelf for a long time and preserved and you don't know 
what they've preserved it with, but they've sprayed it to basically let you open when you open it weeks later, maybe after they've packaged it, that it's crunchy and fresh. Well, is it really food? Like if it doesn't spoil, if it doesn't go bad, it's probably not stuff that we should eat. You know, when you think of when you buy vegetables and fruit, like I go food shopping twice a week because I don't want my vegetables, like my salads and all that to spoil because it's food, <laughs> right? I know it seems so simple to think about, but it's amazing how we just kind of fall into that trap because of the marketing and, and the way they, you know, package things. So if you can get anything out of it, just be a little bit more mindful. And I'm not talking about, you know, having people deprive themselves. It's just finding a substitution that's a healthier version of foods that you like. So I'll, uh, I'll post a blog with some information later and some more tips. Um, so I hope this helps. Hope you guys are having a great Thursday and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.